Um, the one reason why I like sharing is the stuff that we learned here is stuff that I've learned from other coaches. The reason why we go four and five wide is my second year at Lake Mills. We used to run the I formation with um, a spread package. And then our fullback got hurt and we didn't know what to do. So we kind of mainly just ran four wide. Then we played Lodi and Lodi is like one of the teams to beat in division four. Ton of respect. We always use them as the standard. Well, they had a D tackle by the name of Skylar Kirk. And we could not run the ball against them. So going into the game, knowing that, we just said, you know what? We're not going to run the ball, not a single time. There's no point wasting a single play running the ball. So we legit lined up every single time in four and five wide and tried throwing the ball. Then at the end of the season, we evaluated that game and thought, you know what? We got more skilled type kids than we do linemen. So we need to, we need to do this all the time. So then I started emailing coaches all around the country who ran four and five wide and asked if I could meet with them. Almost all of them said yes. So I ended up going to a couple different schools, mainly in Ohio, and they take their football serious in Ohio. So if you ever get a chance to go to Ohio and talk to coaches, do it. Um, met with some schools, spent seven, eight hours there. They told us everything they knew. And if I ever had any questions, they'd be more than willing to answer them. And this is what we've done. We've implemented this. Our kids like it, especially since we were a basketball school and our basketball team is really good. This allowed us to get these basketball kids out. This guy down here, that kid's 6'5". He's a 6'5 basketball player. If we run the wing tee or we run the eye, we might not get him to play football. But now that we tell him, you know what, he's going to run routes and jump at the ball like it's a basketball, now he kind of wants to play. Right? So we can get more kids out at a basketball school by going five wide. Right? They're not battling those big guys down on the line. They're not getting smacked around by linebackers. They're out here playing you know, this kid who's like 5'11". So that's a good matchup for us. So we just keep adding to, evaluating, taking out, changing, <coughs> seeing this four and five wide. And we found we had some good success with it. So. The first play I want to show you guys is our all hooks play. The reason why I want to show you this is one, we run it a lot. Two, this is the most simplest play, okay? Um, I never realized how simple of a spread play there could be until I was shown this in Ohio and thought, you know what, we're going to do this and we do it a lot, okay? This is also a play that you can run whether a team is backed off or if they're playing up. Okay, um, here against Lakeside, they play off of us, so we call it a lot. So you'll see a lot of the first few clips are against Lakeside because this is how they play us. Okay, if we call this play against the team who's pressed up, you cannot run a hook with guys in your face. Okay, so then for us, we teach our guys what? The next thing they do, they turn it into a vertical. All right, they turn it into a go because you cannot run a hook against somebody that's in your face, all right? One of the keys that we teach in our all hooks play, four steps. Your route is four steps, okay? That's how the timing works. So it's very easy to teach. <coughs> you take four steps. Whatever your four steps are coming off the line, that fourth step, plant your foot and turn around, okay? The quarterback, he's not taking any steps. He gets the ball, he turns, and he throws it to the guy that he has already predetermined, okay? So right now, if you can see our quarterback, he's looking, okay, and he's deciding who he's going to throw to. So he knows before the snap where he's going with this ball. What he likes is all those guys are backed off, so he could probably throw it to any single one of them, okay? Those, all those receivers know that after their four step, they're going to turn, the ball's going to be there, okay? Um, the other thing we do is we teach our receivers on this play to start with their opposite foot forward. So usually we start with the inside foot forward. Here we got to start with the outside foot forward because on that fourth step should be your outside foot turning in. Okay. Um, we run this play on all sorts of situations, right? We might run it on first down just to gain five, six yards, or we'll run it here in this situation where it's third and, and four. Third and four, and because of the way we pass the ball, Look at how much room they're giving us, okay? And we'll take this. And here's the other thing. 
Grant, I know that six, five kids, four steps are going to be much longer than our running back in that number three spot there. But even if our quarterback throws it to that running back in that number three spot after he takes four steps, if he gets tackled immediately, it's like fourth and one. We're going to go for it on fourth and one. Okay? We won't shy away from going for it on fourth down. So we don't necessarily tell our kids that they have to run to that first down mark. They can run their four steps, catch the ball, and we'll go for it on fourth down. So we try to instill that type of mentality as well, is that, that that's what that play is designed for. We'll take what that play gives us, and we'll move forward from there. Yeah. You want to step back? Oh, yeah. So four steps. Simple as that. And then we get the first down. And that's the first down. That's a chance for them to get off the field. And they give us all that room, and that's what we'll do. Right there. One, two, three, four, turn. Bam. Easy first down. They gave us that much room. And that's not even a far of a throw. So even if you have a quarterback that doesn't really have a strong arm, he can complete that pass or should be able to. Okay? We're not trying to throw it very far. Look at all those kids are open there for the easy first down. Okay? You can't get any easier than that. Same thing. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. That's fourth and three. Fourth and three. Look at that room on the bottom. And there, I don't know why he doesn't throw it right away. Okay? He panics. What I think happens is look at he looks at the top for whatever reason. That's not a lot of room up there. That's where he decided he was going to go with the ball, and that's why he holds it. Okay? If he throws it at the bottom, those guys are open. Our kids in that situation, what we teach them, I'm sorry if I'm in the way, no, go ahead. is once you turn, if you are covered, move to some open space. Move to where they are not. Okay? We don't try to get too elaborate. If you're standing there and they're standing there, move. Okay? He just cuts in a little bit first down. All right? But that's, that's fourth and three. We're going for it on fourth and three. And it's on the wrong side of the 50. But, like I said, our mentality, we're still going to go for it on fourth down. I hate punting and I hate kicking field goals. All that space again, boom. Right there. Look at that. That's first and ten. That's four-step hook. Turns into a first down because they give us so much room. And you look at it this way, too. Say that kid misses that tackle and he stays on his feet. What happens after that? That's a touchdown. Hey, Dan, the guy up top, um, yeah. was he supposed to run like that? It looked like he was about to bend it in. He just ran it. All the way up top? Yeah, up top. No, he just didn't turn. So the ball was out. Okay. So he's just being lazy. <coughs> 35, another 35 situation, bam, right there, okay? If he doesn't make that, which he gets the extra fight, it's fourth and real short, we're going for it. What's your splits? Hmm? What's your splits? <clears throat> so for us, and I wish I would have talked about this, the key for us in our whole entire passing game, whole entire passing game, like I said, our kids are basketball guys, and they run a four out, one in offense, motion. Okay? The key for them in basketball is spacing. The key for us in throwing the ball is spacing. If they are lined up too close, it messes everything up. So we always talk about spacing. So before on our film review, when we pause it, we talk about spacing. We don't have necessarily you need to line up here, you need to line up here. You just need to not stand right next to the other guy. Because then if somebody's coming out to cover you like an outside linebacker's jumps out to cover number three and you're standing close to number two, now you're both messed up, okay? So here I think we have good spacing on this lower half, right? One's on the hash, one's on the bottom of the numbers. That's good spacing. It gives lanes for our quarterbacks to throw the ball. Right? This is still all the same team in the same game this past year, okay? That right there is where I was talking about where he turns it, he ends up turning it into a goal. Not what I wanted to do. Oh, no, that's what I wanted to talk about. Hook and go. Yeah, the hook and go. And we run this so much, right? We run that hook so much that teams then, when they see our kids turn, they immediately bust forward. When they bust forward, we just take off. 
Okay? And then we, most of the times it's more open than that, but we like doing the hook and go. We'll throw that in there too. See, and our quarterback just gives a quick little pump fake. Usually I just tell him a little shoulder fake more than so than the ball. But it worked. We got a guy open in the seam. Is it intentional that his stance is switched on that one, Coach? Yep. Absolutely. And that's the only hook and go I think I got. Do you block that differently? Or? Nope. See? Miss tackles. We'll take it. You know that space up there on top is where it should have probably thrown, but. Second and five. Boom. And that's an easy completion. Easy completion. And we can do that all the way down the field. I think this is the last one against Lakeside, and we'll show you some other, other looks. But that's late in the game, and we're still doing the same play. Same play. If you're taking the sequence and the numbers up top, I think we ran this play four times out of five plays. So it was all hooks, all hooks, we ran the ball, all hooks, all hooks. If it works and we get space, we will keep doing it. Was the running back there for protection or just to give him a different look? Uh, if he's in the backfield, since it's so quick, yeah, he just stays in the back. We usually, in our pass game, Try to get the running back out as much as possible. If we get to one of the plays that I have on my list, you'll see him leak out of the backfield, and teams usually miss it because we don't throw to our running back a lot unless he's as open as you'll see him get. So he doesn't get many catches. But here, because the quarterback already determines who he's going to throw to, catches the ball and throws, there's no room for the running back to go anywhere. We don't want him to run a swing and then pull a linebacker into the path of that hook, so he just stays in the backfield. Oh. All right, so there we go. That's our all hooks play. All right, so any, any team can run that play, right? You could be a double wing team, and you can turn and throw it to one of those wings, and you can still get those yards. All right, the next one that I want to go over is our slants, speed outs, okay? Slants and speed outs. Now, if a team runs press against us, then we get away from this, all right? The next play, uh, we usually only run it when they give us room. And we teach it this way. So, the slant is over the top, the speed out comes underneath. Okay, so the slant is going to set the depth and it's going to set a pick. Not once have we been called for an illegal pick on the play, but we're also not hitting any defenders on it. Okay, so the guy who runs the slant runs his normal slant. All right. <coughs> if we call it and they are pressed and we do have a slant, the guy who runs the slant is not going to take any steps vertical. He is just going to slant right off the line of scrimmage. And then the guy running the speed out is really only taking like two, three steps as he, he it's not a square out, it's rounded, all right? And he gets off the butt of the guy who is running that slant. And just as well as the hook, our quarterback in our quick game here predetermines where he's gonna throw to. So that ball comes out fast. So in order to be able to pick the ball on this play, you would have to jump the speed out kind of knowing that it's going to be the speed out. Steps yeah, depending on his depth. If he's more off, then he'll take it like three steps in this slant. But it's just as simple as speed out boom. Okay, and that that is our two point play. All right, our our first kicker was out with a sprained ankle, and then our second kicker broke his leg on the first punt of this game. So we were out both kickers. So we had to go <coughs> two points every single every single time. Okay, so we run it down there as well. And for us, when we call this play, we do it on both sides. Okay? I used to hate running mirrored routes because if you look one way and it doesn't work like you saw on that one hook, 
you now look back the other way, that route is already done. But because we predetermined where we're going to throw the ball, it doesn't matter. So we do it on both sides. yard pass play but it's a quick quick little speed out here. And it just cuts up the field. If they gave us the room, we'll take it. Sorry for the shaky camera. I had a freshman do a camera. Not good. Okay. And if you look at the down and distance, that's fourth and two, fourth and three. Fourth and three, we're still going for it, right? I said, I hate kicking field goals, we're not going to do it. All right, there we are, and that scores a touchdown. So fourth and two, we score a touchdown. On either side. Damn. Can we turn into an out now, We do. Just like the hook, where we have the hook and go, we also then, on our slants and speed outs, we now have a go for both of those. So we'll run a slant and go, and pretty much an out and up, if we have the time. If we're playing a heavy blitz team, um, which we do at times, we can't run those plays because it takes too much time. Are there uh, coaching points that you tell the quarterback, like what to look for? Like, Space, I mean, make your... your like he threw it to the slant that time, I was just wondering if there was. Oh, uh, he's going to look to the right, and he saw him break to the middle, and he was open. We usually like to listen for a switch. If the corners yell switch, that's usually a good determination of seeing what, uh, what we want to do. Another play. So like that last play you saw a lot against Lakeside, because that's what they gave us. Here against West Salem, they gave us this play all day, so we kept running this play all day. If we go out of five wide in this play, okay, we take that number three guy, and that number three guy, it can be a running back. You can switch him out, put in a receiver, uh, depending on the year and the personnel that we have. We just tell that number three guy in the slot, just run straight down the middle of the field, right? If they're so focused on that short stuff and they think that's coming, that streak right down the middle of the field, we've hit that for touchdowns. If you want, you can tell them to do something else, but <coughs> the middle of the field is usually what's going to be open with everything else. So again, we got space. We like playing against teams with space. Bam. Easy first down. And here, here's a little note. Um, we led the state in passing, and when most people think Lake Mills, they're like, hey, they're an all-out throwing team. Well, really, we're not, okay? I actually just looked at the numbers. We threw the ball 58% of the time. We ran the ball 42% of the time. So we're not 70, 80, 90% pass. 58%. 58% we throw the ball. But because we have completions like this, we can pass down the field, we can break a tackle and make a big play, which then also sets up those big ones down the field and we can take our shots. And we like to take our shots. As simple as a three yard completion turns into a first down season. Here's one where he throws the slant more than the out. Okay. Our quarterback will also look, when we break down film, we look at 
the defense and how they play us. And when we get a look like this, where it says nobody's in the middle of the field, we might want to throw that slant. Because if we can hit that slant, then he's off and running. But everywhere on the board here, guys are open. But here's, here's one of the other things. So we said, one, we don't throw this against press. You can't, all right? It's too hard. The other thing you can't do is if they do switch, all right? We have thrown picks against Lodi. They switch this. If we run this, they'll switch, and that guy will be standing there for that out, and he'll pick it, okay? So this is a play that we know when we play Lodi. All right, for us, play number two, well, cross that off. We're not running that this week, okay? So then you gotta go back to other plays that you might run instead. Have you seen a lot of pattern match coverage in the ball coach? No. All right, here we go, fourth down, right? Hey, punting. We definitely can't take a field goal from there. All right, so we're going for this. Plus, that's our rival, so I don't want them to touch the ball. They jump on the speed out, wide open. Take that play all day, first down. Once again, in our quick game, when our, line back, or our running back is lined up in the backfield, because the quarterback knows where he wants to go with the ball and it should be coming out quick, there's no time for him to get into a route, and we don't want him to mess up the play by dragging somebody somewhere, so then we just keep him in to block. All right, so once again, that's another easy one. You don't really need a strong arm quarterback to throw that quick little speed out or a slant, right? You call plays at the line scrimmage? No, yes, we are a no huddle team. Our guys will line up, we'll give the hand signal, and then we go, okay? Sometimes we go fast, but you know we don't have a lot of guys on our roster, so we don't go break next speed because we know we'll wear ourselves out. So we give our, our signal in quick, so it gives our quarterback time to read the defense and decide where he wants to go with the ball. Do you ever have problems like with teams that mask their coverage? Like they wait until the last second and then When we're younger. Look. When we're a younger team. So last year when Adam, our quarterback, was a sophomore, yeah, stuff like that confused them. When we played Catholic Memorial um, in the playoffs, yes, because they came out with something we weren't prepared for. They came out with three safeties, all right? And that gave us a little bit of trouble in the first quarter. Once we got used to what they were doing, then we settled down and we were able to move the ball up and down the field um, through a couple picks in the red zone and end zone, but they still struggled to stop it. Um, and the reason being is they had three safeties, which meant there were open zones underneath and we just made these type of completions down the field. Another quick play that we have. So now you've seen the all hooks, you've seen the slant and the speed out, and another one we want to determine is our all slants, all slants, okay? So here, everybody's going to run a slant, except for the number three. So if our number three is in the backfield because he's our running back, he stays in and blocks, right? Quarterback's making that predetermined read of where he wants to go with the ball. There's no time for the running back to really get out into anything. He stays in and blocks. When he's out here... Okay? You can do whatever you want with him because you know the other guys are running a slant. Maybe we have him run a flag. Maybe we have him just run right down the middle of the field. This year, for whatever reason, we tell him to run a bubble. All right? Because when we run a bubble, what we find is guys then run out of the way and it opens up spots for that slant. Okay? But that kid that's out there now, he started out running back. We took him out because... He didn't know the play, so he kept running a slant and then mucking stuff up in the middle of the field. And then this is right back to regular. So when I told you we run that all hooks play, that outside leg is up. Now we're back to the inside leg is up. And once again, we like the looks where we don't really get a safety in the middle of the field because if we get a completion, it's open, right, right in the middle of the field. Now he just needs to catch that ball. Right, but the opportunity is there.
What is this? Third and 15? Third and 15, right? They gave us space. We like that one-on-one -on -one matchup, so we motion that guy over. And then one-on-one <coughs> on, -one on a slam, right? Third and 15, you assume here comes a deeper route. He's going to try to get the first down. Truthfully, if he would have gotten tackled where he got the ball, we would have been okay with that. We still would have went for it on fourth down. So if he gets tackled here somewhere, you know what? Fine. It's fourth and eight. We'll go for that. All right? But instead, it's tough to make that tackle. He gets the extra yards. And on third and 15, we run a quick slant. First down. Okay? We'll take that too, right? They have a safety out there so they can help. If there's no safety out there and that kid misses that, then we got ourselves a touchdown. Right? And that's just off a simple slant. So once we added this whole quick predetermined read, throw the ball places, we became much better. <clears throat> now I do want to show you this too, okay? Um, this is play 80. <coughs> This play worked really well, okay? Obviously, we messed it up, and I don't know how we don't complete this pass, okay? But that bubble took that linebacker and froze him, okay? Which gave our number two guy wide open, okay? And we totally messed it up. And I thought, you know what? There's no way they're going to allow that to happen again. But let's do it anyways. So we call the same play again. The very next play. And our quarterback, you know, being a teenager, wants to make sure he does not mess it up again. He almost underthrows this. You see him, he doesn't even step. He kind of just guides it in there. But it worked again, right? So we like this here. We like that bubble taking guys out of there. Wide open, right in the middle. And he didn't really have to predetermine. He already knew where he was going with the ball. He didn't have to read anything. He just thought we're running the same thing. That's where I'm going. I think I started with this one. All right. So that's our all slants play. Okay? So we got a high completion percentage of these plays. We can get a good amount of yards, right? It's not a home run play, but it, it sucks the defense up. Because if we're getting the ball that quick, you have to come up to tackle. So what we find is teams start creeping up because they want to stop from us making plays. So once they start creeping up, then we can start throwing over the top and go deep. Slow go. Yeah, we can do all sorts of those types of plays. All right, the next one I got, just a couple clips on. It's part of our quick game, okay? We use the go route. A go route for us is a quick route, all right? It's quick because we don't, we tell our quarterbacks, now we're lucky this year, right? We have a quarterback who has a cannon for an arm and he can throw that thing 300 yards. But we don't want to teach our quarterbacks to do that. We're not always going to have the Adam Mowens of the world who can just bomb it down the field, right? So what we teach our guys is this. A go route is a quick route. You get the ball. You know who you're going to throw to. Throw it as high and as far as you can and let the receiver run under it, okay? Uh, for Adam, I can't tell him to do that because then he'll way out throw the guy. But we tell our quarterbacks, especially our freshmen, get the ball, throw the go route, let the receiver run under it. Okay, so for us, this next play is a go and a speed up, right? And we don't teach anything differently than we teach anything else, all right? We have our speed out, it's quick couple steps, and he's looping and rounding it out and clearing out with that go. If we like the go, here's where we want to take our shot. So we tell the quarterback, look at your matchup on the outside. If you have the go, throw it. If not, then look at the, the speed up, okay? So pick a side. And then if we are in Hawk, for us, which is five wide, that third guy, you can do whatever you want with him. He can run a slant, he can run a hook, he can streak down the middle of the field, whatever you feel that you need to do. If they've got one deep safety and they're sitting deep, run to the middle of the field and stop. If they have no safety, just run right down the middle of the field. If they're gonna blitz, slant to wherever it looks like that linebacker is blitzing. 
So you got some freedom there. So here we got the press coverage, so the out eh, may not work so much, but we'll throw it anyways. Okay, but this is this is how quick this goes, right? It is hard to make a play on an out even when they're that close. A lot of yards, no. Some yards, yeah. And in a game where it's raining heavy and getting the ball and throwing it out there is hard, we'll take that pass play all day. Right, Kelvin, was it not raining? It was. Yeah, it was. Well, we had yep. So it was coming down hard. So we knew throwing the ball deep was going to be a challenge, right? And that's okay. We'll, we'll just have to throw it short, all right, as much as we possibly can. There we go. Now they're up close again. And we got to go on the speed out, right? So we tell our guys they're up close. And you got to speed out. It's going to be tough. So here you might want to take your shot deep if you can, right? And in a game where it's raining, not so easy, right? And that's just a simple speed up. No safety deep, bang. We got lucky with the slip there, but a short, very short route turns into a nice big game for us. <laughs> Okay? And we'll take that. We don't need to throw it deep down the field all the time to accumulate all those yards. We just need to make sure we throw it, catch it, and then if we can break a tackle, we're in good shape. Right? It, it's real, real simple. Nothing mind blowing, nothing like that. Just turn, throw. We'll take that completion all day. So you look at the numbers and you're like, man, that quarterback's a stud. I mean, I could do that. And I tell him that all the time, too, when he starts thinking he's good. <laughs> so we go, third down. That's the wrong play. All right, same thing. Press up, slant, speed out, or go speed out, and we just throw it up there and let our guys go make a play. Okay? Once again, this is where we sell to the basketball players, right? You're going up for a rebound. It's you against that guy. Go up and make a play. Okay? That's what we want. We'll take that. Because if we complete a pass like that, now the corner, right? It's a psyche thing. They're afraid to get beat deep. Where do you think that corner starts to play? It starts to back up. Now it opens up that hook. It opens up that slant. And it allows us to do more things. If they want to stay in that press after getting beat, then it's just easier to complete that go route. Right? Just <coughs> it up then, right? throw it up there. Let them go make a play. And that, uh, that kid, his name is Charlie Bender. He's a great basketball player. If we don't run four or five wide, he may not play football. All right, now I think I only got one clip of this play here that I found. Um, but this one, right, is along the same concepts of things we run, right? It's a hook on the outside, and it's a flag on the inside. Right? So it's as simple as that. If we got the space on the outside, we'll throw that four step hook. Okay? Four step. Our hooks, four steps. And this helps with the timing. Those inside guys, they'll run that corner run. Okay? When a couple years ago, we had a kid by the name of Hayden Iverson, he broke the state record for touchdowns in a season with 27. This is a play we threw to him. Okay? He was that slot guy, and he would run that corner route and we would throw it up there to them all day, okay? One of the coaching points that we talk about here on this play is when do you break on that corner route? You break on that corner route when you get to the depth of the outside corner. So if that outside corner fails and he keeps dropping back, 
you never run a corner. You just keep running, okay? Because if you, if you say, oh, break at eight yards, well, what if that corner is playing at six yards and he drops back and you throw that corner up? Well, now he's sitting underneath it waiting for that interception, okay? So you break when you get to the depth of the corner. So if that corner is dropping and you're running it, then he plants his foot to stop to come up because he sees the four-step hook, that's when you break behind it. And that's the hardest part is teaching those young kids to rep that. You have to watch the corner, that's when you break. If you break too soon, it's gonna get picked. Right? Now I don't think we complete this, but it shows that it's open, right? He breaks there, and there's the opportunity. That's the play that we threw to Hayden so many times, and we got all that space out there to work. This one, that one's on Adam. Okay? It's not a bad ball, but if he puts a little bit more air under it, we complete that pass for a touchdown. He breaks when we run that hook, and he got to where that corner was, and then he had all that space in the end zone to work. We just got to complete that pass. Does he stem it inside at all? No. All right. So if we motion over here, Okay. Once again, if you're in five wide and you got a number three, you can do whatever you want with that number three. He can slant, he can hook, he can run right down the middle of the field, whatever you see going on that week from the team. Okay. If they've got a deep safety, he's not going to streak down the middle of the field. He's going to stop. If they don't have a safety because they're all playing up, just keep running. Okay. Be a, be a home run threat. Now, in this case, where we motion one over, okay, that number one, hook, number two, flag, number three, we tell him to get to the middle of the field, okay? And for that reason right there, all right? The number one on this side, he still got the hook. That doesn't change, okay? And that's just a quick little lob to the middle of the field, first down. Back. All right, so once again, we're running that four-step hook. So this, you can see the receiver down here on the bottom. His feet are reversed, all right? His outside foot is up. So now he's going to run that hook, okay? Because when that second step is his outside step, fourth step is that outside step, plants in the ground and he turns, that's where the ball could be. So in theory, you want that slot guy to run vertical because he never gets to the corner. On, her, on the right side. Correct. He should not have. And we'll point that out and film and say, always quiz them, when do you break on the corner? And they should say, when you get to the depth of the corner. And we point it out, well, what, what are you doing? That's the pass we want right there. High and far. Lots of air under it. Let the receiver go make a play on it. Doesn't have to be perfect. All he does is bam. He starts to break. Almost runs like a fade more so than a play, but still works. And then watch the number three. No safety <coughs> in the middle of the field. Go to where they are not. If there's no safety, get to the middle of the field. Then he could have hit them right there. So we'll take that. Now here's another one. Okay, so that, that was our quick game out of our four and five passing set. We like to do that a lot. Um, is the bubble. Okay. Did I show you guys the nows? Did I talk about the nows? I don't remember if I started with that or not. All right, let's go to the nows. This one's great too, okay? This one's against the... Uh, um, if they give you room, and they give you enough room like this, you don't even have to run a route, right? You don't have to run a route to be a passing team. If they're going to give you space, just turn and throw your guy the ball, okay? If they miss a tackle, you got yards, right? If they tackle you, okay, next down, right? So there's the room, just turn and throw them the ball, 
and we work on that in practice. We have a drill with our quarterback. We don't let the quarterback look or think about the throw. We don't worry, let him worry about the seams. What I do is I take a knee, I've got four or five footballs, and I say, Adam, you ready? He'll say yes. When he says yes, he's ready, the ball gets snapped by me. Not by him, he doesn't indicate when the ball gets snapped. So I'll sit there on a knee, uh, we'll have um, another quarterback out there playing receiver. I'll toss him the ball, <coughs> grab the next one, toss it, grab the next one, toss it, grab the next one and toss it. So he's got to get it, turn, throw, get it, turn, throw. He has no time to think about what the ball looked like coming out. He doesn't have time to think about the seams. He doesn't have time to think. He's just got to throw the ball, get the next one, and throw the ball. Okay? And that just works on getting the ball and throwing it out there right away. Okay? And then we start to make a play. Coach, is this a call play or is this something you do at the uh, scrimmage? You see both. We do both. We have a call now play where if we see they're giving us room, we're just going to throw it right now. We're not going to worry about any routes. We're just going to throw it right now. Okay? The now is also part of a um, pre-snap RPO that we do as well. We can talk about that later in the chalk talk. But once again, if we have a run play called, our receivers are running routes still. So every run play can be a pass play. And sometimes we'll call the now as the RPO. So the quarterback, who's the only one that's going to know if it's going to be a handoff or throw, will look out there and be like, oh, okay. So then he'll get the ball and throw it. And you'll see our running back, he's running like he's going to run an inside zone or outside zone, but our quarterback gets the ball and throws that now because it's open. Now here's one thing pertaining to linemen when we run the now. When we run the now and it's a call now, we will we'll pull the tackle, okay? The tackle on this side though, he didn't pull, okay? I knew it wasn't a run play because you can see the running back get out there too. But we actually release the tackle, okay? Sometimes you'll see the defensive end, he will run with the tackle because they know that's what we do. But a defensive end sometimes making a tackle out in space against our receivers is tough to do, okay? So we'll release our tackle and then we get out there as an extra blocker. We'll do the same thing when we run our bubbles. Bubbles and nows, we just, we release the tackles and we get them out there blocking. You can see it here. So it's not a run because the running back gets out there and releases, okay? So the tackle's not very fast, so it kind of hit. I wish he was, but he's super slow, but he'll try to get out there and make a play. And I think on some of these, he actually does get out there and block, okay? But we'll take that four or five yards. We didn't even run a route. He just turned and threw him the ball. So you don't need to be a spread team to, to do this stuff. Look at that. That's fourth and inches, okay? Fourth and inches, and look at where number two is. He's 10 yards off the ball. We're not gonna run a play. We're just gonna turn and toss him the ball. Right? Catch the ball, fall forward, first down, right? We'll take that. Move the chains. I like what your receiver does. So he, since he knows he's covered, he's going to block right away? Like the yep. Defense. Well, see, that's a, that's a called now play, and it's called to him. So then our other receivers are going to block. They're not going to waste a whole lot of energy down here when it's called up there. Okay? Because our guys play both ways. We don't platoon. We, we can't. So... Hey, it's going this way, it's fourth and inches, you guys are on this side, stand there, okay? If he breaks a play, then start busting your butt down the field, okay? But save your energy, because the next play could be all birds. I don't know if your wide receiver coach is here. <clears throat> he played receiver for me at Germantown, so I still take credit for all this. <laughs> all right, here we go. Second and 15. Boom, just throws it right to him, okay? We'll take it, do we get the first down? No, but we make, I don't know, what is it? Almost second and 20 something, I'm not even sure. But look, we just catch it and then we go. We make a play, we get a good chunk of yards back to at least third down, right? And now we're getting into somewhat where I may think about kicking a field goal if it comes to fourth down. But we'll take it, all right? And here, let's see how quick he gets the ball out. Okay. So you can see that, that tackle he released right away and tried to get out there. Here we go. Third and third and one. Right? That number two, he's playing way off. He's playing way off. We're gonna call this and we're gonna throw it to him. Look at it. 
doesn't get a lot of yards. We'll take that game, though, but it moves the chains, right? And as we start to get later in the game, first downs become huge. Right? We knew athletically, athletically against Onalaska, we weren't just going to go out there and impose our will. So we had to be very smart in our play call. Third and one, we're going to call it now. Bam. Just throw it to him, get that first down. See, and he's looking, he knows, right? We got that room. Now our quarterback, if he looks and I call a now to somebody and then they got press coverage, he can audible out of it and he may just turn it into <coughs> a run and might try to run it, okay? Here we go, look at all that room. Missed tackle, block, touchdown. We didn't even run a route. He just opened up. That's all it took. Simple as that. Boom. Miss tackle, touchdown. Oh, 10 minutes, coach. All right. Damn. Here we go. And we run it here on a bunch, okay? I think that's the first time on the film so far you've seen bunch. We didn't even run bunch a lot. You know what? But we liked it. Here. We got two lead blockers, second and five, second and six, something like that, first down. Once again, he didn't even run around. Our quarterback just turned, threw that guy the ball, and off to get it. Just run vertical, get as many yards as you can get until you get tackled. Right? Run hard. Run with an attitude. You do that, first down. Coach, I noticed your offense is never down a three point stance. Nope, never. Run pass, we're never in a three point stance. Because you know what happens when we, for our guys, and if you guys drill it really well, when our guys are in a three-point stance, stand up, okay? At least this way, if they're down here in a two-point stance, they can just stay down here all day and they don't have to do anything. So whether it's a run or a pass, we are always in a two-point stance. You got any QB runs for it? I do. Let me get to that. And we can go over the, <coughs> the deeper stuff, the intermediate stuff in that chalk talk. All right, for us, we can run. That's the first play against Menominee, right? We played them a year before. They kicked our ass. We knew what they were going to do. They were going to bring pressure. They're big. They're strong. They're fast. They're athletic. All of that stuff. That's why we wanted to play them, okay? And we said, we're going to run it right at them. If they're going to bring to us, we're going to go right back at them, okay? 5-1, here we go. All we do is we say we're going to block big on big in the middle. Adam, you run forward. When you see a hole open, run. If they've got a hard defensive end and he comes up field, let that guy go. Because he's going to run as hard as he can in one direction. You're going to run as hard as you can in the other direction. And it's going to be hard to tackle. Okay? So, here, so for us, this is the first play against Manami. Right? Bang. And it's just now in the open field. Right? As a junior, he gets tackled. Maybe next year as a senior, he doesn't get tackled in that situation. Here we go again. We knew they'd line up, no safeties. Okay? Oh, it was a called run. I remember. It was a called run. But once again, I said pre-snap RPOs, right? Look at where that number two safety is. Why run it, right? I'm I mean, he's our best player. He's the best player on the field. When we take the field, he's the best, right? We don't want to get him hurt, so if he can turn and throw it to number two, who has like 12 yards of space, turn and throw it to him, right? But Menominee is Menominee. They do a good job getting to the ball tackling. We get two yards, no big deal. At least we got some positive yards there. We're eating up clock, and it's gone, okay? That was the very next play. Now, this is a little bit hard to see, but there are five receivers out there. There's no safety. Let's just run the ball. Okay? And he's looking. Should I audible out of this? I don't know. Bam. Make a guy miss. Get some positive yards. We'll take it. Okay? And this is right before half. So the score right now is 7-3 to three Menominee. And we're just trying to get down, move the ball. Oh, maybe kick another field goal. If we can get in the end zone, great. See, and then that's where they bailed last second, so he couldn't get that pre-snap RPO. Make a 
the guy miss and get some yards. Are your linemen pass setting there or are they attacking? They're attacking. They're still in the two point stance, so they're not down in three, but they're attacking. Right? So that outside linebacker, right, push him, let him go, whatever. He should have actually pushed him to the outside and then released forward and maybe get that safety. Um, but at least he didn't make the play and we're able to get some yards. Okay? Because you can't stack the box too much when we got five wide receivers. Okay? Um, if you use a safety, then that's another guy out of the box and we're running it. So you have to at least put enough guys in the box to stop the run. But now we're man up everywhere else and we like our matchups in the passing game in that regard. Five wide down here. We ran this a lot, okay? There it is. Boom. Right up the middle, okay? And this worked, right? This is, this is where we teach our QBs and Adam's really smart, okay? And I'll show you from the end zone view. He looks to the right, okay? So Adam looks to the right, even though it's a called run play. There's no doubt about it. But Adam will look to the right. That linebacker who's the overhang, and you can see from the end zone, he, then he starts looking like, all right, he just looked. He, it might be some sort of audible. So then when Adam gets this ball, you'll see him put the ball up. Okay? When he does that, that linebacker actually turns his head for that quick second, turns and looks. When he turns and looks, now Adam's running forward. He can't sprint off the edge to make that tackle in the backfield, and now we've got ourselves a five-on-five, five, and it's a touchdown. So there it is. See, Adam looks, 40 looks. Adam puts the ball up, he looks, now it's a touchdown. Right? The rest of it is just five-on-five, five, right there in the middle. Okay? And we don't, we don't need to push him anywhere. We don't need to move him anywhere. We just need to not let those linemen make a tackle in the backfield. So then there's a touchdown. And we do this a lot down by the end zone. Here we go once again. Nobody in the backfield. So you assume maybe it's a quick pass somewhere. And we just run right up the middle. Like we said, you have to put five guys out of five guys or we're going to throw it, which puts six in the box area, and we got five. So can the one guy that's not being blocked by our five linemen, can he make the tackle against the quarterback before he gets in the end zone? And if those DNs come up hard, like we said, we'll let them go. See, he comes up field, our tackle releases downfield, and now we're off and running. We'll take that. Now we do run more with our quarterback on a two by two, but we definitely like to give that look that, hey, we got five wide, we know they're gonna throw the ball, and we end up running. And we'll take the yards. Adam had 960 yards rushing, he almost had 1,000 yards from that quarterback spot by doing stuff like that. I believe this is actually the very next play. So we get the yards tacked on after having too many men on the field by the defense, we line up, and we just we call it in. Let that defensive end go off field, and now we run. Right up in the middle. We'll take it, right? Okay? Because it's hard to be under control from that defensive end spot running up the <coughs> If you have a slight yes, then we'll, we'll adjust to that. Just saw the hole on, off tackle, so that's where he runs. Pick your hole and go. Okay? They got three down linemen, they got two linebackers, they got five. So we'll we'll do it. Once five on five, and even if it's six on five, we'll still run. Okay? We like our our matchups. And pretty much if they're if our two guards are uncovered and they got two linebackers, those guards just fire right out to those linebackers. That's an audible. For our quarterback as well. So if we line up in five wide and we have a pass play and he looks and he sees that there's five guys in the box and our guards are uncovered, he'll make a call and it'll be an immediate, we're just going to run the ball. Okay? But I believe this is a this is a called run call because I can look at the route down here at the bottom and it's an RPO route that we are running down here. So it's definitely a, a called run. Okay? There's 
present. All right. Um, like I said, we'll be doing the chalk talk. I can go over the deeper routes and get into the more intricacies of that because there we definitely do a lot more route adjustments and what we read depending on what we see. And as always, guys, if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to email me or call me. Um, I'll put my cell phone up here on this whiteboard real quick. Call me, shoot me a text. I am always willing to share whatever we have. Coaches have been awesome to share their stuff with me. So most of this stuff I have taken from other coaches. Please feel free to call me, text me, come in, talk, whatever you guys want to do. I will always be open. Thank you for coming.